Welcome to the newest video. Today we're going to go over the different gear and stuff that I've got for the Rivian over the past six months for the year of 2023. But first, we're bringing you to High Still Bridge here in Hoodsport area, Shelton area of Washington State, the Olympic Peninsula. Let's take a gander. It's so high. Alrighty then. Welcome to a beautiful rainy day here in the Pacific Northwest. Before the end of 2023, I kind of wanted to give you guys a little walk around of the Rivian and show you what I've done to it this year. Now, I kind of want to do this for my own self so that that way I know how much I improved in 2024 because I got some big plans and these plans, I'm excited for it. But then at the same time, I'm like, am I going to need another daily driver? I don't think so, but let's go ahead and see what we have all done this entire, what, six months that I've had it. I'm at 13,000 miles now. Crazy, right? Crazy. There's been some problems. The funny thing about this truck is when you have it in kneel mode, it looks so short. Like, look at that. You can barely see underneath it, but she is definitely a beauty. Now, I know there's been other vehicles that have come out recently, like the Cybertruck, even the Hummer EV. And they all have their own little different designs to them. But the Rivian kind of has a place in my heart. I just love the way it looks. It's a little bit bigger than a Tacoma. Smaller than an F-150 or a Tundra. But it still does everything that I need it to do. And more. Like on most cars, whenever I first get them, excuse me, as it locks and unlocks, I tend to bring it to go get tinted, ceramic coated, and a PPF on the front nose. The PPF really helps for when you're going down forest roads or catching a rock or something like that. You're not going to worry about dents. You're not going to worry about scratches. Because if we come back over here, well, that's a dent right there. PPF wouldn't have helped that. That's a, that's a dinger. Don't think I can show you the scratch that's over here, but it's pretty gnarly. In fact, I think this is it right here. There is a scratch in the paint because I, I don't know what I drove by but I actually think I did that in my garage. But if I would have had PPF on it, paint protection film, it would have done a self-healing, but it didn't. So that just means that one, I'm gonna have to bring it to a detailer and hopefully they can buff that out, which more than likely they can. And two, I'm actually debating about doing stealth wrap around the entire truck. It's gonna be a little pricey. I'm gonna lose the truck for a few days, but it's well worth it since I do go out and adventure a lot in this thing. Now the next thing, is window tint. I love it. It's great. I don't like being in a fishbowl. It's just not my cup of tea. Like, if I, if I want to be eating a burrito, a, a Taco Bell, I want to be eating it hardcore. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I just, typically for most vehicles that I get, I do tint the front windshield. These didn't come with um, the front windows tinted, nor did it come with this right here. I like this visor tint, whatever you want to call it, for the simple fact that sometimes I'm short, man. I'm short. I'm like 5'6". So sometimes the visor doesn't catch the sun, but the uh, tint stripe does. Ceramic coating helps also protect the paint. It actually makes it a lot easier for you to clean, too, because the ceramic coating puts a coating on top, and it makes it nice and silky smooth so smooth helps water not stick to it helps dust and dirt not stick to it so in that case it makes washing easier you ain't got to worry about like maybe sap sticking to it sap will stick to it but it's easier to remove next little modifications i think i got this from abstract ocean these are just little covers that i got for the tow hooks now it's not much in fact it's kind of funny when i join a community and they talk about their first modification being, I don't know, debadging the car or something. I'm like, oh crap, this this car community is brand new. I don't know what I'm going to do. Like, I come from, from the import scene. I've fully restored an AE86. God, I miss Miley. She was such a good car. You know, 370Z, 350Z. Uh, I even had a Hyundai Tiburon that I thought was the fastest thing in the world. Don't ever let me say that ever again. But just those yellow hooks. 
give it a little extra something. And I do believe I got that from Abstract Ocean, like I said. They do a lot of Tesla parts, but they're also doing Rivian parts too, which is kind of nice. And I do believe that I ordered, was it EV Sportline or was it from Abstract? I don't remember, but a cover, a matte cover for this. This really shows fingerprints when it's dark or whatever, or whenever it's light out. So with the matte um, film on it, it doesn't show your fingerprints as much and it's not as glossy. I picked the perfect day to actually come out here. In fact, I, you know, I can normally come out here during the week and is it about to hell? We are like 1500 feet up, but there shouldn't have been any kind of rain. No, it's 50 degrees out, so I don't know. Let's, let's look up real quick. Now, another modification that I mentioned before in my review is this little cup holder. You're like, where, where did you just get that from, Dom? My door handle. Without this thing, it, it anything could fall through there if you try to put something in there. But with this, it captures it. And so that's kind of nice. Uh, sometimes I'll try to put my keys there or my phone there, and it'll just fall through because, I don't know, that's how Rivian designed it. One thing that I kind of wish that they would have done was right here on this inner lip, have it to where it has like a lip or something on the inside to where you could grip a little bit tighter, like whenever you're shutting the door. You have them for both sides. Now, a quick caveat off of that. A caveat, caveat, sounds fancy. I was given these to uh, review. So I, I will put in the in the uh, notes or whatever that this was a paid review. I wasn't even paid. I was just given them. But another thing that I was given that I haven't installed yet is those wind visors. You know those things where you can roll down the window just a little bit, let no rain come in, but and then the wind goes by. Just have some fresh air come through. I actually got to put those on. Truck's been in and out of the shop lately, so, and then the holidays happen, so I just haven't had time to actually do it. So Elliot, I am sorry. I am truly sorry. I will get to that. I'm having some deja vu right now. Like I feel like I have had this in a dream and something bad has happened. I really hope not, but we'll see. Go on and get into the bigger modifications that I've done. I guess I can open this. This is my Skycamp Mini 2.0 that I got from iCamper. Um, they have a place in Kent, their actual showroom. So I actually went to the showroom and got it. It was a white tent. And then it also had 2.0 latches. The latches used to latch underneath here instead of right here. But we replaced it. My neighbor and I replaced these with 3.0 latches. I don't know if iCamper actually wants us to know this, that you could do that. They don't really advertise it. But that was one of the biggest gripes from the 2.0. And what they changed to the 3.0 was these latches. Super easy to open and close now. Now, I did do something dumb. And I sent this to a shop to get paint matched. So this is LA Silver. There is no other eye camper LA Silver unless someone actually went out and did what I did. But yeah, I kind of just deal with the white and I didn't just want a black one. Let's go ahead and open this real quick just so that you guys can see inside of it. Now it is raining and I don't have my, what do you call that? I don't have my rain fly on it right now because I seem to be going camping. I seem to go camping whenever it's really wet outside, like a lot. Let's see if I can bring this up without much issue. Yes. So we'll go ahead and bring this down real quick. Let me uh, let me put you guys down. Okie dokie, artichokey. Now, this is fairly straightforward on how to actually set it up. You want these legs to be all the way up here because it is safer for you that way. And then you want to make sure this is all the way down. And then since I don't have my rain fly, it's fine, but let's show you guys inside real quick. Oh, wow, it's really tracking my face that much. That's actually really nice. This is a footprint of it. I wanted this one I, because it fit on the back of my truck and it was super easy to set up. Now inside of here, I am clumsy. It comes with its own mats. Uh, I did get a mat. I did get a camper pad from XPad, the XL something. It's very comfortable, nice air mattress, because these were a little thin. Um, I'm getting older, my body hurts. But besides that, it stays dry and stays warm. This thing is amazing. I do have the winter. Now I do have the winter, what do you call that thing? I do have the padding that goes inside for to keep it nice and warm in the winter. I also have the Annex. I haven't used either which one of those things yet. I need to, I need to do more camping because um, I've actually never even set them up. 
Usually it takes me one or two times to do something before I actually want to show you guys what's going on with it. But speaking of something that I use all the time, let's go check out the camp kitchen. We will start on this side. If you look, you should be able to easily grab whatever you want. I have a coffee maker, a kettle, and some other things in there. If you need a beer opener, beer can opener real quick, a bottle opener real quick, there you go. But check out how nice this is. This is sturdy. And this is marine grade plywood with a Danish sealant on top of it, a Danish oil. So nice. Look how muddy it gets inside of here. A quick thing about this door, this is where my hoses are for the air compressor. The air compressor is back here and we can put air in our tire whenever we need it, which is awesome because anytime you go off on the trails, you need to lower your air pressure so that you can uh, have a nice smoother ride and don't worry about puncturing a tire or anything. But yeah, this is heaven sent. I had, I have a ARB one for when I had my 4Runner, but I don't have my 4Runner anymore. And in fact, a lot of the safety stuff and camping stuff and off-roading stuff that I have is all from my 4Runner and Crosstrek days. To be able to have the onboard air compressor, quite nice. Some people are like, oh, it's so cheap. I'm like, don't, don't knock it that you don't, don't knock it because you don't have one. What I want to show back here is that the Rivian has some lighting so that you can see what's back here in the night. And another nice thing, this four foot bed, four and a half foot bed, can fit a case, you know, that holds things in it for certain reasons and things. I do not have a powered torno, to, tonneau cover or even just a manual one. I will be getting one this year, depending on the build that I want to do. So I take this in and out anytime that I go somewhere. Right now it's actually back there because I got this from Harbor Freight and I wanted to test its ability to stay dry through normal driving conditions, rainy conditions and stuff like that. So I can put my happy things inside of there with a guarantee that they'll be safe inside of there. But here we go. This is the Thunderbolt Adventure Supply Camp Kitchen. It's super nice. If you, I just love the color of it too. Now, whenever you take it out like this, you unfold it. Each one of these bags have my have the things that I need inside of them. I bought this just in case if one day this is a little bit warm. It is an induction countertop, so you, you it doesn't get warm. Sometimes it does get hot to the touch because it's outside and the heat from the sun is on it and radiating. But induction heats up the pan and the heat is in the pan and not on the burner. Induction, I can go over it later but it's kind of like a newer technology. A lot of RV people use it all the time. Now we adopted it to our camp kit, to this camp kitchen. Ordered some Amazon cutting boards, cheap little things. There was like $5 or $15 for like 10 of them or something like that in case I ever lose them. In here, I don't know if you guys can see, but this is where the camp kitchen plugs in to the outlet that's down here. Over here is just another storage area. It's very nice. Underneath is all storage. This is where I keep my forks, my knives, my plates, and everything that I use. And here is where the camp sink is. They are talking about making this into a cu cutting board insert, but I do not need that right now. Since I already have a cutting board, but quite nice. Um, if you did have, if you were doing your sink right here, you could put your bottle right here to where the water comes in here and you could do your dishes, or you could put your bottle in there and have it come out to here to do your dishes that way. So yeah, super simple to use. Super simple to put away. I'm doing this all with one hand. So you just got to give it a little unga dunga to go in. Especially if you're not at a level with your truck. But nice and tucked in. Yeah, Rivian was supposed to actually come out with one, but they never did. And that kind of upset a few people. But that's why Thunderbolt Adventure Supply actually came out with one. There's a few other people who actually have a gear slide that just came out recently. I forgot their name, but... It's more metallic while this one's made of wood. It looks sharp. I like this one because it kind of gives you a little bit of earthy Pacific Northwest vibe. You know what I mean? So let's go ahead and put this away. One thing I never do when I when I first got this thing, I went camping with Michael over at, uh, what do you call that, Conquest Overland. And it was my first time actually ever using the tent, I think. Was that my first time? I think, not really too sure pretty sure but it was, it was a little embarrassing because i didn't realize how to open it or how to close it like right now i just goofed because 
that handlebar is stuck. I'm gonna have to do something about that. What I do love about the Rivian is that you can use this as a step. If you are under 250 pounds, I am pushing 270. So I'm pretty sure they just have that in there to say 250 is our limit. Watch, I break it right now. Hold up, I'm gonna put you guys up here. Hi, welcome. Woo, let's just bring this down. This is how I die. This is how things happen. Now, I did actually break this. Like it came off of its hook because this helps bring it down and tuck the stuff in while you're up here. So I need to go get a warranty issue with that and or just try to replace it myself. But I tend to not to like to bother anyone if I can fix it myself. But these steps do work, even if you are 270. I need to lose some weight. I'm going to the gym. I'm lifting weights. These biceps are gonna be bigger soon. Yeah, this is so much easier than the 2.0 to actually shut. Now, I keep my key on my keychain. The guy said, I can't remember, like, don't do that. If you lose your keys. Oh God, did I scratch the truck? I don't know. It's easier to replace, just don't lose them. I was like, okay. And I was like, I'll never lose these. And then one day, this keychain came disconnected because it's not exactly the greatest D-ring out there. Like, there's a lot of D-rings that are out there that you can do some campy or some military type stuff. Like, I've actually pulled Humvees with two D-rings and a tow rope. We broke down a few times in Iraq. I got really good at recovery. But that's the truck. Those are the little add-ons that I have done that are more Rivian specific. I can show you what's in my frunk right now because the frunk is where I keep most of my camp gear, most of my, I don't know, I guess you could call it survival gear or whatever you need when out camping. So this is one of the really nice blankets from iCamper. That thing keeps you so damn warm, so warm that I actually have to like take off everything while I'm sleeping. This is a worn recovery gear kit. I won it at like a raffle a long time ago in the Forerunner. I have a nice little blanket. I also have a really good jacket from Cool, K-U-H-L. They're based out of Utah. I did a, what did I do for them? I did a photo shoot for them. They sent me like that jacket and like 10 other pieces of gear to take photos of like back in 2017. It was actually kind of cool. This is my Anchor Solex. Solex, this is the, I want to say this is 1000, but I keep it here for whenever I have my heated blanket in the tent. So I just bring it into the tent and the heated blanket keeps me warm. I don't need a diesel heater. Even though I have the camp stream, I'd rather use just the heating blanket instead. Now, these little guys are pretty awesome. I saw a few people advertise them, but these uh, venison country casserole just sounded so good. And it is, it really is really good. These little containers hold a lot of different things inside of them. Mainly, this is my first aid kit. So I got first aid right there. And then I have quick clot just in case. I'm very good at cutting myself. Down here, I have recovery boards. You're like, why aren't they on top of your car? I don't need to have them on top of my car. Maybe whenever they're muddy, I can throw them in the back of the truck. That's fine. This is a great little book. I've been having it with me for a long time. So just in case, if you actually ever get lost in the woods or you're just bored and you're needing to take a poop, here you go. Read this. But got the first aid kit easily to handle um, whenever I need it. Got my two fuel um, food sources right there if I need. In here is more of odds and ends, bug repellent, I have bug repellent, a scarf, another extra fire starter kit. I have like several of these all around my truck, just in case if I need some Gorilla tape, 550 cord, some fire starter if I need, some stormproof matches, just in case, an antiseptic towelette. Uh, and then I have this miniature, miniature camp stove kind of thing. And it works very well if you just want to heat up like a, a cup of coffee or a can of soup or something. You just put it on top, put the tinder inside, and then boom, there you go. So yeah, I love these little pouches, these little containers that I got from Costco. They work quite well, even though I am kind of seeing myself needing something else. Got a knife. This thing has been with me since Iraq. So 2006, I went into the supply and I was like, hey man, can I get a knife? Like I was just expecting a little pocket knife. No, they gave me this big old thing. I want to send it to Benchmade for them to actually fix it and help me out with it. 
this should not actually be in here. That's a cleaning cloth. Um, this is a towel. This is a beacon that I also got from my rack. Uh, let's see if I remember how to turn it on. So it will blink if you're ever lost in the wild. You just throw this up and people should be able to see it from far away. Now here goes some more stuff, some more matches, some Allen wrenches if I need, poncho liner, a little notepad, another book to read, a cookbook if I want to get froggy with the stuff that I didn't prepare for out here. This one's actually just empty, but here's another food that I have underneath here. Snatch block. Oh no. Not for me towing, or not towing, but um, getting a snatch block so I can pull people out if I need to. This is nothing special in here. Underneath here has my charging uh, cords and stuff like that, and a few other small little odds and end things. So the camp light, no batteries right now, but the batteries are in another part of the car. But yeah, that's what I keep inside of there. Now look, if you look right here, my PPF is messing up. The reason why my PPF is messing up, I, I hit my charger at home, and, and then I, um, what do you call that? It did nail mode, so I pushed my PPF up. Whoopsie. Here, I have my radio charger right now. I'm running them off of battery operated stuff. Got a notepad back there. Uh, let's see. This is my camera here. But in here should be, yep, a pot for cooking, my cookware, another jacket if I need, electric blanket. That right there is some more, what do you call that shit? Utensils and everything for cooking. This is my electric blanket, my tripod. This is this is my work gear right here. I need to get a cover for the back seat. I put the dog in here the other day and she is just tearing it up. Yeah, that's pretty much it for right now. Let's go ahead and put it in camp mode. Where where's camp mode? Hold up. Camping. And then we are going to do a self-leveling of the truck. So I, I am going to put this outside because it won't do while I'm not sitting inside. God, I got a big head. So let's see what it does while it's out here. All right, so let's go ahead and do the self-leveling camp mode. Now, while it's doing this, I could talk through it and tell you what's all going on. So if you're out ever somewhere with other vehicles, they sometimes have to put rocks and stuff. We'll just do this real quick so you guys can look at my beautiful face. They have to put rocks and everything underneath their wheels in order to make sure that their platform is nice and level. We don't need to do that. We're on air suspension. So that means if you're looking, it's going up, down, back, forward, left, right, making sure everything's nice and level. Where I'm parked at currently, you don't need to really worry about it as much. But it is a heaven sent so that whenever you're in the back of your tent, you're not having all the blood rush to the back of your head. But one thing I would love that Rivian could do is to adjust it while you're in the car. So say like if you do want your head up just a little bit and have your feet hanging down, it is now leveled. This is what it says as leveled. I don't know if it's really leveled, but I kind of want to go right now and show you guys what it looks like in high mode or off-road mode. Because right now we're in, well, we were in nil mode, but we're not in nil mode anymore. We're resetting the, the wheel height right now. But, you know, so getting back to what I was saying is actually adjusting it to where you can have your head up just a little bit or if the rain's coming in a certain way, you can cant it a certain way without having to adjust the position of your car, which would be kind of cool. That might be something that Rivian really listens to its people. And so you can give it suggestions and everything like that or complain about it enough and then sometimes they fix it, which is kind of nice. So now that we are back in regular mode, let's go ahead and show you what off-road mode looks like. Let's go off-road and show you how high this thing goes up. Some people are like, oh, that's a very low truck. How do you go out? an adventure in it and i'm like well, what, what are you talking about they're like that's lower than a prius i'm like first off no it's not second just wait just wait they're like just wait for what and so while we're sitting here talking still they're going to be like wow is this thing really raising up like that you have more clearance than i do this thing has 14.9 inches of clearance and it's completely flat at the bottom which is ridiculous the reason why i say that's ridiculous is you can get hung up on almost anything, which is one reason why I still haven't got rock sliders yet. Because when we went to Tahuya, I watched people scraping on their rock sliders, and they were like, oh no, that's what the rock sliders are there for. I'm like, but the rock sliders are also hanging down like an extra inch, giving you, you know, that much less clearance. And I'm like, I don't know if I want that. Now, do I want to damage the side of my vehicle? No, I do not. But I don't think I want it just yet. I might 
that might be one of the first things that I do order, though, this year. There's one, I forgot who actually has it, but it's an actual kick out that shows. Uh, so whenever you're on a rock and there's a kick out, so the rock's coming. And so instead of it just going back to your tire, it kicks out, causing your truck to move over or whatever, or just not going straight into your tire or into the back of your vehicle. So I think that's the one that I'm looking for. But yeah, this, while it's all the way high, is, is kind of high. I have to hop in like I'm little Mario before I get the mushroom because I am short. I have short legs. I have a long torso, but I got short legs. So hopping in and out of this is kind of interesting whenever it's in high mode. But we are still going up higher right now. I will be talking and fast forwarding this so that you guys can see a before and after. But yeah, after this, I'll talk about the two other big things that I want to do to this vehicle, which is kind of almost three things that I am planning on doing in 2024. There we are. We are the highest right now. So watch, watch me hop down. It's going to be like a bloop. You see what I mean? But is it not recording? I was good. Thank God. Next biggest thing that I'm going to more than likely be doing in January is replacing these wheels and tires. I'm holding on Falcon to come out with the AT4Ws, which they said should be out in January or so. I really dislike these Scorpions. They're not that great in the rain, and they're okay in the snow, even though they're three-peak rated snow tires. My favorite manufacturer of wheels, besides work, Black Rhino, just came out with a new set of tire or wheels for the Rivian. Even though I like these, I'm going to be replacing them with the ones from Black Rhino. And now, another thing, I am really big on storage, and that's why I really like the Rivian, because it comes with a lot of storage. Now, when I have the truck, or the tent on the back of the truck, I can't really use it the way that I want. Taking it on and off, yeah, it's 150 pounds, but it's kind of a little cumbersome for one person to try to take off. I need to get some pulleys in the garage so I can easily take it off. But what I am planning on getting is an actual cab on the back that goes all the way to the top, the front of the vehicle and is a pop-up tent. So in that way, in the back, I can get in and sit inside if I wanted to and then pop up the tent and lay in there. And so that's going to push me back. God, I think a eight to ten thousand dollars or something like that. Whereas this tent was like three thousand with the add-ons and everything was like four thousand. Then with the paint it was like six thousand in total. So yeah, it's only like two thousand dollars more. But it'll look a lot nicer. The only problem I'm going to have with it and no one has really, there's one other guy who has it that I know of right now. He says it's about 15% hit in the range. That's a problem for me because I use my vehicle for work and losing 15% of range might be kind of tough. But there might be a chance that I will be keeping this as a personal vehicle and getting an R1S strictly for business. But we'll see. There's, there's a lot of ifs in 2024. I need to make sure that the real estate market is actually going to still go good because if not, I won't be able to do that. Hopefully this kind of like showed you a few different things that you can do to your Rivian at first in order to personalize it to your own. These vehicles are great. I love the range. I kind of do wish that I had a little bit more range. Their off-road capability is quite nice too, but I still want to try to make it my own. So the stealth wrap, wheels and tires, and then the, the cab over the back camper setup is definitely my next go. I want to thank you guys for hanging out and uh, I kind of want to bring up something too before I let you guys go. I did start a community called Wattage Outdoors. Now what is Wattage Outdoors? Let's let's put you guys down real quick so I can use my hands as I put them off to my side. So Wattage Outdoors is basically meant for people who like to go outdoors and use electric vehicles, electric bikes, um, drones, portable air conditioning units, you know stuff like that, battery packs. In the Overland community we weren't exactly welcomed we are more welcome now but at the same time i don't consider everything that i do to be overlanding i like to go out and go chase waterfalls i like to go out camping a lot of people call it car camping and so i kind of wanted to make just one community that isn't a brand specific as in say a jackery only group or um, an a anchor or a rivian or a hummer or a tesla only group it is a group of outdoor enthusiasts who use electronics and battery powered items to adventure with if that makes sense 
So if you guys want to join the community, it's on Reddit as Wattage Outdoors, or it's on Facebook as Wattage Outdoors. My Instagram now is no longer of Dom's mind. It is now Wattage Outdoors. So hang out there. Come hang out with me. Um, 2024, I got some big plans for it. And yeah, I hope you guys can come along for the ride. I kind of want to see what other people use their vehicles for or um, battery operated things like bikes and like e-bikes are really exciting to me. I want to see it. I think Polaris actually has an electric UTV or yeah, UTV right now. It's not necessarily one good for off-roading big time like some of those, but get you 40, 50 miles and 40, 50 miles out of here can get you a lot of different places. So anyways, again, thank you very much for your time. Here's to 2024. I hope the holidays was great for you and your family and you have a great day. I will see you guys next year, unless you're watching it this year which is awesome because that means this is evergreen content. I need to make it home. I've actually never been to this part of the woods. Am I lost? I hope not. All right, take care of you guys. Have a great day.